Alright, how's it going? We are in Acts chapter 24, and we are going to read verses 1 through 27. This is the trial before Felix. So here we go. The Apostle Paul has been captured. A uh, big thing in Jerusalem happened. Now he's been sent to the governor over in Caesarea. And so he's there, and now he's going to... Uh, be tried before Governor Felix, and nobody's really quite sure what he's done wrong, but everybody wants to kill him. So the Romans are trying to figure out what's happening and protect him as a Roman citizen. So here we go. Five days later, the high priest Ananias went down to Caesarea with some of the elders and a lawyer named Tertullus, and they brought their charges against Paul before the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullus presented his case before Felix. We have enjoyed a long period of peace under you, and your foresight has brought about reforms in this nation. Everywhere and in every way, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge with this with profound gratitude. But in order not to weary you any further, I would request that you be kind enough to hear us briefly. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect and even tried to desecrate the temple, so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn the truth about all these charges we are bringing against him. The Jews joined in the accusation, asserting that these things were true. When the, go when the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you have been a judge over this nation, so I gladly make my defense. You can easily verify that no more than twelve days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone at the temple or stirring up a crowd in the synagogue or anywhere else in the city, and they cannot prove to you the charges that they are now making against me. However, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that agrees with the law and that is written in the prophets, and I have the same hope in God as these men, that, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. After an absence of several years, I came to Jerusalem to bring my people gifts for the poor and to present offerings. I was ceremonially clean when they found me in the temple courts doing this. There was no crowd with me, nor was I involved in any disturbance. But there are some Jews from the province of Asia who ought to be here before you and bring charges if they have anything against me. Or these who are here should state what crime they found in me when I stood before the Sanhedrin, unless it was this one thing I shouted as I stood in their presence. It is concerning the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. Then Felix, who was well acquainted with the way, adjourned the proceedings. When Lysias, the commander, comes, he said, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, but to give him some freedom and permit his friends to take care of his needs. Several days later, Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and listened to him and spoke about, uh, listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul discoursed on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough for now, you may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe, so he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, Felix was seceded by Portius Festus, but because Felix wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. So Paul is making his defense before Felix, his accusers are there, and this kind of keeps going. Um, Paul is here for two years, occasionally talking with Felix, but he's otherwise, he's imprisoned, not a terrible prison from what I understand. You know, he's under guard, um, so maybe it's more like a house arrest kind of a thing. He's, friends can take care of his needs, that sort of a thing. But this is just a, a fun chapter, chapter 24. I love how they're so very kind to the Roman governor. You know, you know that the, the Jewish people hate the Romans. <laughs> and yet, 
you know, the, the Jewish accusers here, you know, we have enjoyed a long period of peace under you, and your foresight has brought about reforms in this nation, you know, from verse 2. So they're all, uh, you know, being very kind and gracious and flattering of Governor Felix. And, you know, even Paul is, you know, I know that for a number of years you have been a judge over this nation, so I gladly make my defense. You know, he's just, they're very gracious, uh, to, to others, and especially those people in authority. And it's just, it's kind of interesting to see there, the cultural piece there. And of course, the power of the individual, you know, Felix, the governor, can just say, uh, just go kill everybody. And then they would kill everybody, you know. So they've, they have reasons uh, to be this gracious and to speak this kindly and flatteringly. Um, <clears throat> and it's amazing to me, too, I suppose it's, it's, predictable and obvious, but uh, still, Paul is not at all shy about sharing the gospel with Governor Felix. They have these conversations on a regular basis. You know, Felix is looking for a bribe, uh, but his wife is Jewish, so, you know, he understands about the way. It said in verse 22, Felix, who was well acquainted with the way, uh, which means that Felix knew about Christianity, the teachings of Christianity, that sort of a thing. Um, and yet Paul just kept uh, talking about these things and apparently it was very straightforward. Verse 25, as Paul discoursed on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, that's enough for now, you may leave. So Paul is telling Felix about Righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. He's talking about, you know, God is going to come and He's going to judge the world. And those who have done wrong are, you know, are going to be judged. And I'm sure he talked about the forgiveness that is offered through Christ. But, um, you know, he's talking to the governor about righteousness, self-control, and judgment. Enough to scare the governor. And he's like, oh, you know, he just doesn't want to talk about it anymore. So he sends him away. But they do have various different discourses. But then Felix is succeeded, succeeded by Portius Festus, and Paul is just left there. Um, Paul is left in prison for two years, and he's just at the whim of these Roman officials. And... I don't know what your thoughts are on the political scenario in the United States, but I just want to pray a prayer of thankfulness. This is a, a messed up country, but it's a wonderful, wonderful country. I believe the United States is still the best country in the world, and it's a great place to live. It's a great place to, uh, to experience freedoms of every kind. We're amazingly free uh, here in the United States, and we would never have to put up with something that the Apostle Paul is putting up with there. He'd been imprisoned for two years just because the governor wants to grant a favor to the people who don't like Paul. Um, you know, so let's be thankful that we live in a country where we have freedoms, we have religious freedoms, where I can make videos like this and you can watch them, and I don't have to worry about going to prison or anything like that. Uh, so we need to keep our hearts thankful. So I don't know, next week is Thanksgiving, but let's pray a thankfulness prayer today. So Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. And thank you, Lord, for the United States of America. Thank you for the opportunities that we have to follow you freely, to believe uh, what we want to believe, to uh, have religious freedoms, to have uh, freedom of speech. Lord, economic freedoms, just all the opportunities that we have. Lord, let us be thankful for those and let us make the most of those opportunities as well. Let, let us not get caught up in unthankfulness, caught up in thinking that everything is terrible. Um, but Lord, let us realize that compared to other parts of the world and compared to history, this country is doing great and our lives are so good. So Father, help us to be thankful and to count our blessings, and to grab hold of all the good things that you have for us. So bless our day today. In Jesus' name, amen.